so those of you um, who've seen my uh, material before will be well aware of the fact that I was brought up uh, it, by Roman Catholic parents. Um, and I did the kind of dutiful thing for many, many years and going to church every Sunday and this communion and all this kind of stuff. And so I eventually sort of wised up really at about, um, I would say at around about 15, 16. Uh, and that's when I really began, began to start questioning everything. But, you know, I'd, I'd gone, like, been to Catholic schools, Catholic church every Sunday, uh, the priest would come round, and all this kind of stuff. Uh, but I was just kind of getting bored with routine, of doing the same thing all the time. And what became really noticeable to me was that every time we went to church on the Sunday, this collection box would be passed around and I would see like loads and loads of money just like passing me by and, and be, you know by the time it reached sort of to the back of the, of the church where we were you know they were having to like to bring out another one because it was just like full of money and I kind of switched on to this very quickly thinking that there's money in this and it kind of for a while became my ambition to, to become a priest because I could see that there was money in it then this whole religion thing if, if you convinced enough people that there was some sort of invisible being up there they'd give you money so I kind of investigated it and I didn't pay any tax the Vatican was just like gold and like millions and millions of pounds in the Catholic Church. I really was like, I'm going to start my own religion. That was my first thought. I could see like a full time career in this. The only difficult challenge being that I was like 16. So there was no way I was going to become a priest. Um, and I didn't really want to have to go for this, you know, whole bollocks that I was kind of doing every Sunday for, for three or four years of my life. You know, I, and I was, in fairness, I was getting a little bit too cynical about it. You know, because they, as I say, every week, this sort of collection thing full of money would be there and, and then having given the money the priest would stand there like getting rid of you very very quickly under the guise of giving a blessing you know so you go like kneel down stand up fuck off that was it you know that was your blessing right so as I said I became really aware of, of the power of religion and the church in terms of like finances you know I as I said I looked into it and there were evangelists like in America living in nice big fancy houses and you know later on you know, you, you, you discovered that they were kind of swanning around in like multi-million pound jets living lifestyles of luxury and it's like when there's all this money coming in and like no taxes to pay or anything i mean you've got to admit this is a pretty good business model right you know it's, it's pretty damn foolproof you just convince enough people that there's some invisible being up there that you've got to pray to you've i mean people have got it made even now these evan these TV evangelists in America on, on the internet have hundreds of thousands of pounds a day pouring in. And of course they say, well, you know, God needs to provide me with a jet because my congregation is all over the world. 
Well, you know, like for a few hundred quid, you could jump on a plane, really, you know. But the power of religion, the power of this sort of bullshit belief is incredible. And it's full of holes. Religion is full of things which, if you'd sort of stood back and really thought about it, you'd be scratching your head and thinking, what the hell? What the heck? Adam and Eve, classic example. So God, whatever, decides to create planet Earth, if you know, that's what you're into believing. Decides then to create a being in the form of man. Boom. Adam. God even provided a name, Adam. Where? I don't know. You know to all intents and purposes, his name could have been blah, 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 blah. We don't know. But anyway, Adam will do. Puts Adam in a garden, because kind of God wants a garden. You know, wants nice things. Adam's there. Makes a decision. Okay. Adam looks too happy. What can I do to solve that? Ah, oh, I know. Woman. This is where it gets really good. So bearing in mind this is God we're speaking about. God the Almighty who can make planets and everything else. The story goes that God, like a thief in the night, came down and stole, stole one of Adam's ribs. Now that story kind of falls apart if you think, well, if God created Adam, why does he need to steal a rib? Because he could just make another one. You've got to be pretty kind of stupid to sort of buy into this. You have to be. In a way. Or so indoctrinated. That you don't take a step back. And look at the logic. So. Bearing in mind that God can steal a rib from Adam. Yet in the Ten Commandments, it says, thou shalt not steal, which is supposedly God's will. On that basis, we could all go around to the department stores and the supermarkets next Saturday fill up every single bag that we possess, not pay, and when we get to the door and we're stopped by the security, we just say, hey, it's cool with God. You know, try telling that to the magistrate. But think about it. So, we have Adam stole this rib and miraculously made woman. Okay. Now, if it was me, barbecue sauce in the oven, I'd have a meal. God chooses to make woman. Fine. His prerogative, her prerogative, its prerogative, whatever. Adam... And I, I, I just don't know how to explain in any other way whatsoever on having this other being suddenly appear from nowhere. Now, if it was you or me, 
And let's say, you know, we were on a desert island or something and on our own and all of a sudden this woman appeared. You'd go, excuse me, where, who are you? Where did you come from? What is, you would, you'd question it. As an intelligent human being, you would question it. Adam, like she's been there forever, huh? sees this other creature there, doesn't question anything, like, what the hell are, what are those? Nothing. Then having not questioned it, somehow, somehow, he manages to work out what goes where, and they have children. Miracle. So what, they kind of just playing around one night. And, oh, oh yes. 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 We obviously couldn't speak any, any bloody language, you know. Mm. 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 I have no idea. No idea. That part is not, it's kind of like the Virgin Mary. Not explained. Any way at all. I don't get it. As an intelligent, reasonably intelligent human being, makes no sense whatsoever. None of it. Now, if that wasn't unbelievable enough, slurp, excuse me, we're then led to believe Eve <laughs> received a message from God, telepathically, biblical email, outer space, SMS, semaphore, Morse code, whatever, tells Eve not to go to a certain tree. At the same time as telling her not to go to that certain tree, he says that one over there. So what does Eve do? She goes to the tree. At the same time, God's saying to her, now, those red things there, they're called apples. Now, you're not to eat one. Well, it's, you know, human nature, come on, you know? Talking to a woman, no disrespect. Picks the apple, bites it. Gets better, gets better. Snake comes down from the tree. Now, if I was in the same position and I saw a snake coming down a tree, I would be inclined to move away, not knowing, right? Strange creature, never seen one before. It gets better again, better still. The snake starts talking to her. A snake coming down a tree towards you, bad enough. If a snake or any other animal, creature, whatever, started to have a conversation with me, you would not see me for the trail of diarrhea I was leaving behind. You know, right. So we have this kind of really magic sort of mushroom 
based story around God being a thieving bastard a talking snake it's like and people believe it they absolutely believe it some people and I just, I, you know, I like scratch my head to try and comprehend how someone of intelligence could hear all this, could read all this, and think it's rational. I don't understand but at 16 years of age I began to question all of this stuff like walking on water and other stuff that I'd hear and what is you know bloody Houdini or just like, like I would read childhood fairy stories that were more believable than that Snow White and the Seven Dwarves seem more real the three little bloody bears, whatever they are, seem more real. But adults, grown adults, listen to these stories and somehow formulate their lives around it. So on that basis, anyone could put a dog collar around their neck, start up a church, and people would, they would follow it. They would absolutely, and they would spend money. They would give money. And the evangelists of America in their big private jets, jets their multi-million pound mansions, their Rolls Royces and whatever, are living proof of that fact. Now, again, as a logical, intelligent human being, why would you buy into all that? Because if it was anything else, any other type of business, you you just say, no thanks, no, scam, you no. People would be up before the courts, before juries, for fraud. But tell people about an invisible being, man, whatever, no problem. How much money do you want? Incredible. Absolutely incredible. Partly why I have nothing whatsoever to do with religion.